right. So the uh, so the, the thrust control that's going to be in the vectoring of those motors and things that all going to be uh, mechanically controlled by or or is electronically controlled. There's some smart a circuitry that involves when you extend the flower the Fowler flaps 20 degrees, then that's going to automatically compensate. Can you explain a little bit about the, that part of it? So here's the interesting part about the part 103. The reason that we put the vector thrust controls on the aircraft are that um, in order to meet that slow speed requirement, we need that capability. But the FAR regulations don't say that we have to operate that way. It says that the aircraft must be capable of that. And so what we're using initially is we have no intention other than during the test flights to ever fly the airplane initially with any thrust vectoring whatsoever. Okay. We're just going to fly it like okay. a conventional glider. But we do recognize that there is a tremendous amount of potential in the future to be able to use that thrust vectoring as a, a normal means of operation of the thing and using both mechanical and computer control um, thrust on the thing, we believe that we can really kind of open some new doors. But that's a completely another level that we we have no intention for the first couple of years even delving down that road. We just identified it as a potential area of right. Um, so, so, when, so when do you, when do you expect to fly this off your first carrier? <laughs> you saw the picture I made. Didn't see that. I'm an old Navy guy, so uh, you know my heart still uh, goes back to that. Um, but we have talked um, in detail about some possibilities for even using the aircraft as a drone aircraft and some right. of the potentials in, right. in that. Yeah, kind I, of well, range. I was kind of curious. I, I thought that that might be a possible application of uh, not only manned aircraft, but replace the man with some a lot of cameras and other things, and uh, it becomes a drone at that point then. Yeah. The, um, the front end of the aircraft actually... Um, has a lot of glass in it, so there's windows underneath the belly. So when you're in the prone position, you're basically looking straight down through windows. Okay. And then I'm on the side, about that. there's sides on the windows on the sides. Um, I don't know if you can even see it on. Let's see if we can look right here. Yeah, you can see the cutouts right there. Those are windows that are on the side of the aircraft as oh, okay. well, and as well as the really large canopy that your that your face is uh, going to be looking out most of the time. Right. And yeah, we've dealt with. We've done a whole bunch of testing sitting in an airplane for quite some period of time, all propped up with cushions and stuff and even some chin rests. And even we've tested examples of even hanging the helmet from a bungee cord up on the roof so that you can relieve some of the pressure. Right. Um, I, just time and testing is going to kind of work some of those uh, details out. Right. Now, do you have to wear a helmet in this? No, but um, certainly. I'm going to wear one during flight testing. I've oh, done a lot yeah. of flight testing, and <laughs> yeah, you, you want to have a helmet. Are you going to be the you're going to be the test pilot? Yeah, I've done a lot of test flights on initial designs, and uh, I built a lot of airplanes. Also, I've, I've built well over 30 airplanes now in my career, and so wow. uh, I'm wow. kind of bored with building everybody else's stuff. And this is my second um, original design um, that I'm working on right now. It's actually my third original design, but this will be the second one to fly. Yeah, so. cool. Yeah. All right. Good. Now, uh, so. So, uh, a pricing on this thing. What are you uh, What are you shooting for at this point? Um, we're kind of using the Google model right now. Um, we don't really know exactly. Um, we have some good ideas on how we can monetize the project, but the only way that we can ever monetize this project is it has to be a significant uh, improvement in performance, and we have to be able to get the cost down. We have to be able to keep. You know, there's so many elements involved in the design of a good aircraft. You know, you can, you can make all kinds of claims about stuff, but there's just too many other elements that come into play. So we haven't even talked about pricing right now. We are doing some unique marketing tools, though. We are going to be putting the plans, all of the plans, in their entirety for the entire airplane on the website, and they will be accessible for free. Okay. There will be no for anyone to do any of it. And right. we believe that using the Google model will give you 95% of the stuff free and we can make a living off of that last 5% for those that want us to build their parts for them instead of them building everything themselves. Right. Well, yeah, so that's kind right. of plan to it. Yeah, why not, why aluminum and, and not composites? A lot of these aircraft are composite. It looks like a lot of your aircraft here is, 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 is aviation aluminum. 
Yeah, we've got the primary structure is aluminum. We use um, for all of the compound curves on the aircraft. Um, they're all carbon fiber um, compound curve parts. And the primary reason is because we, well, there's a couple of reasons. Our construction processes have to be something that can be built by the average person without a tremendous amount of difficulty. When you start doing carbon fiber stuff, that all completely involves a factory environment to be able to do that. Yeah. And we kick yeah. the cost down. You know, It's not uncommon now that most of these high-performance gliders that are coming out of these factories in Europe are $250,000. Yeah. That doesn't solve yeah. any of our needs. Our needs are to be able to get somebody to scrounge some parts, start building without any costs involved in them at all, download the plans off the Internet, get that going, start building your plane early on, and with good scrounging and a little bit of technique, um, you know, we think that the $20,000 price bracket and below for the average builder is doable. Um, you know, compared to some of these engines that we have out there, uh, I saw in, I think it was uh, either Popular Science or Popular Mechanics, uh, uh, one of the last month issues in the airport, I saw reading about an engine that's just a little bit more horsepower than what I have here for the motor, and the price of those motors was down to eight hundred dollars. And you know, for a, for a power plant at eight hundred dollars per motor, that really starts to change yeah. the dynamic. Yeah. Uh, the next yeah. best motors we have right now for these category of aircraft are ten thousand dollar motors just for the motor. So you know, we know that we know that the price of the batteries and the uh, you know the motors and the controllers are going to add up, and it's going to be the equivalent of that ten thousand initially. But you know, just like we've seen everything else, the prices that keep coming down and they keep getting better and uh, more reliable. Yeah. Okay, last que last question for you, Brian, and thanks for taking the time. So, what do you see as the future from your perspective of electric flight? Well. I don't think it's just my perspective. Of course, the the, the uh, CAFE Foundation in Santa Rosa, California, um, has really been kind of the leading um, entity when it comes to electric flight. In fact, we just uh, got back from the electric flight symposium down there. Really a bunch of really smart people doing a lot of really interesting stuff with electricity. And their vision for the future is really quite phenomenal. Um, they really kind of painted this picture of what they anticipate will happen in the future, and that is um, grandma will come out to the airport, she'll swipe her credit card on the side of uh, the wall, and she'll go hop in this airplane and push a button and say, take me to Fresno, and this airplane will do this all autonomously, yeah. and it'll be able to do it in and out of small airports because the, the, um, you know, the, the flight um, noise level gets reduced substantially when we get away from um, reciprocating engines. And so... NASA and, and the CAFE Foundation are really working towards getting some development in this area around electric aircraft. You know, we've been losing airports, we've been losing pilots on a pretty regular basis out there, and there's all these pressures on the, in, uh, on the, on the system, you know. Um, and starting with the small stuff, you know, if we're going to get more people in aviation, we can't do it with just the people that can afford a $250,000 airplane. Yep. We've got to get some yep. of these young people back in it. We've got to be able to get the average person out there doing this safely. And to be honest with you, the electric engine, the reliability associated with that, the quietness, um, you know, the simplicity associated with operating something like that, so much different than these very complex um, thousands and thousands of moving parts inside this internal combustion engine. All this heat and this iron, this gasoline, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I don't know how you could possibly look at this from a big picture standpoint and not conclude that we're going to end up there at some point in time. Now, we recognize we're really blazing trail here. We're really um, a little bit premature for the industry. But we also believe that, um, you know, if we want to see this happen, it's our responsibility to participate. And we believe that Unless we get involved with it early on, we're going to be left in the dust by the time it becomes the norm. And so we're, we're selfish in the fact that we're, we're counting on the fact that we've got something good here and we're going to be able to take advantage of it over the long haul. Good. And so if, they, so if, they, if people want to learn more, they go to your website uh, at? Yeah, electricmotorglider.com. All small letters there, pretty simple. Um, and we're even now getting... Hits to the extent that the Google search engines are were popping up at the top there. So 
Um, right. That's all good news right. for us. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I'm going to keep an eye on this as it progresses, Brian. And lots of luck. Fly safe, buddy. Okay. Thanks so much. Good talking with you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.